Okay, thank you organizers. It's a real pleasure be being here. It's an, also an opportunity to share with you some uh, combinatorial points on data analysis. Okay, like it's written here. And I'd like to show you how it works in real life, and you are all all now from real life. How can I press this link using this? Press the link. It's a pity, pity link. Ah, okay, try it. No, allow. Allow. The idea is to allow. It's about huge data. She's looking at me, I can see her tongue going back and forth. She's probably trying to figure out what exactly I am. This guy is trying getting to to inside next. of Anaconda. Does she neutralize the threat? Then getting out. Does she have a meal in front of her? The only thing he, he, he needs is a real toolkit for survival. And I'm going to talk about this further. Let's get out of here. If you're interested, you follow the link. It's okay, how to get out of here? And there, she's on. That was a good strike. But she's, is she holding on? I can't tell. I <laughs> okay. Now I'm, I'm trying to be less practical, more philosophical. And uh, people in computer science are supposed to think that they candle the, the world. And it's uh, the reason for this uh, church thesis that every function is computable if and only if you have some kind of machine, let's say Turing machine, to compute it. it uh, I, I'm trying to, uh, to give you another thesis here that every intractable problem has its tractable counterpart. Uh, trying to be more specific, uh, I'm, w what I'm going to say is that if, if you have a problem with difficult object function, let's say NP-hard object function, you can change it a little and, and, and get a much better computable function. Uh, if it doesn't work, you can consider the same objective function and change the data. Actually, when you work with the real world, it's a lot of noise. So you're not, you, you can't be sure that your objective function is, is this objective function that an expert is interested in. And also, your data is not exactly the data which is so good to be analyzed. But I have to be even more specific. So to think about some combinatorial a problem to, uh, to give you a beautiful examples to, just to show how ca can, you, can you handle this situation. Uh, our main player here is maximum independent set of a graph. So there are people who love di di differently defined it like a, a maximum click of a graph. It's even maybe a big click if you think about a bivertate graph. So we will think about possible changing of an objective function I'll give you an example, a first, uh, let's say, folklore example, like uh, a maximum vertex B-click may be changed uh, with a maximum edge B-clicks. Then we'll think about critical independent sets versus uh, maximum independent sets, local maximum stable sets versus maximum independent sets. If you're interested in changing data, we'll concentrate on conic aggregate graphs, I will define it. If it doesn't work, it, you can think about almost conic aggregate graph. We'll also may consider weighted or non-weighted, well-covered graphs. Uh, we're going to be careful with chaos. And if nothing works, you can call me directly. <laughs> um. So the, the first idea was about a perimeter versus area, or maximum vertex uh, B clicks versus ma maximum edge B clicks. Let's think about this uh, problem in your terms. So we have a matrix 
where it's filled with zeros and ones. And then we are going to find, like it's written here, a big click. So it's a, some subrectangle filled with ones. Taking into account different permutation of uh, uh, rows and, uh, uh, and columns here, it's clear. So you're going to find the biggest possible submatrix of this kind. It looks different, but how to define biggest? What we have here, it's a two-parameter problem. So we have two parameters for this rectangle, two sizes, A and B. And if you want to solve the, the a product problem, it's difficult. If you are ready to solve A plus B problem, it's simple. Let's talk to, to an expert. What's the difference? Both functions are even monotonic in their variables A and B. Am I going to give you a big sub-matrix uh, sub of kind A plus B? Be happy. Because this expert is not a mathematician. It's not important for him. He's going to uh, make, make money, or <laughs> actually. <laughs> the bigger the, bigger the sub-matrix, more money we have. So, well, and I can solve this problem. Just a hint, and it will be a motto of, uh, of this talk. I, I writing in here, let, let it be alpha plus mu is equal to n. Alpha is an independence number of a graph. Mu is a matching number of a graph. n is a number of vertices of a graph. Actually, what's written here is not true. But it's true for bipartite graphs. So the reason that I can solve A plus B, and I, I, I'm not explaining why I can solve A, 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 a the, the product, is that you're building a dual graph. You're filling this once with zeros. Then in this other bipartite graph, the only thing you have to find is the maximum independent set. But it's a maximum independent set in a bipartite graph. So you're computing the maximum matching number for this bipartite graph and just uh, have to calculate this trivial n mi minus mu and you have this alpha, then returning back, you have the solution of this problem. What's the importance of the thing for the expert? He's supposed to be happy. And we're going to uh, make him happy during this talk. OK, we'll have some definitions, combinatorial definitions. Independent set matchings. By the way, I will define it. Don't worry. But when you see here alpha plus mu is equal to n, you see some kind of duality. In mathematics, fundamentally, the most beautiful results are about duality. In physics, it's about symmetry. But physics is trivial in comparison to mathematics. Duality is much, a uh, much more interesting notion. Symmetry is a self-duality. And this kind of duality, so going to, uh, to a, a dual problem in instead of the basic problem and solve it computationally efficient, I'm returning back to the to difficult problem. OK. And the, the example of this duality is actually in between independent set and matchings. We'll think about critical sets. We'll define Kirkor in Corona. Just beautiful combinatorial facts about this. OK. I have three talks here, so we'll, we'll skip some, uh, some small, small, uh, small details of this. Anyway, an independent set of, of a graph is uh, a subset, let's say, A, B, C, A, B, C, Y, without edges between them are matching. Matching is the same, but when you think about edges. Again, mu of g is the maximum size of a matching. General life is like this. Alpha plus mu is less or equal than the number of vertices in the graph, is greater or equal than the half of this plus 1, and you can think about even alpha plus 2 mu that is bigger than v. That's the life. But to 
mathematicians, Deming and Sturble, same year, 79, defined the notion of a Koenig aggregate graph. They said, very simple, they said, if it's so good that for bipartite graphs, you have alpha plus mu is equal to n, let's think about alpha plus mu is equal to n. Maybe some more graphs enjoying this property? And they did it, 79. Interesting point here, any examples? Three hours of examples, so we, we, we'll continue. Ilya will stop me. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's a, some sort of history. We'll, we'll get results. But history is 31, the same year, Koenig and Egevery, they uh, found this alpha plus mu is n. That's the explanation why we call these graphs Koenig Egevery. So Koenig Egevery is a generalization of bipartite graphs. Okay, examples. These are examples. We don't know exactly a Koenig Egevery, not Koenig Egevery, but it will be written here. So for the left graph, alpha plus mu is 6, which is less than 7. So if, according to the definition, it's not a Koenig Egevery. Why? But the, the, this graph is alpha plus mu is equal to, to 7, so it's it's Koenig Egevery graph. Uh, okay. Being uh, or thinking about this graph theory in the uh, in flavor of uh, commutative algebra. So we're trying to, to think about a union of all maximum independent sets, of uh, intersection of all maximum independent sets. And we have a lot of beautiful theorems combining this. For example, Corona is the union of them. And uh, I'll skip it. Core is the intersection of all maximum independent sets. Think about this a little bit. If I can find this core, that is intersection of all maximum independent sets, then I can use some branch and bound st strategy because I found something that is in every maximum independent set and people actually use it. But I'd like to know how to find this corona. I'd like to know something about the size of this uh, core in, in this example. Okay, if the graph has, for example, just one maximum independent set, like here we have with the pass, so the core is this exactly maximum independent set. You can see some more examples, a lot of examples, about three hours of examples. A phenomenal thing, in 87, Jamison, uh, Jamison's the guy who invented convex geometries, by, by the way, but see, he, he, he paid attention, so actually he didn't pay attention, but I convinced him that he paid attention to the fact that for bipartite graphs, the intersection of all maximum independent sets can't be one. It's fantastic. A, it was his birthday in, in Boca Raton, and I con convinced him finally that he did it. But it's true. Uh, When you think about koenig egerary graphs, you have a lot of structural properties. The nice thing, also some kind of beauty, when you have a, a, a koenig egerary graph, then when for general graphs, union of all maximum independent sets plus the intersection of all of them is greater or equal than 2 alpha. For koenig egerary graphs, you'll have exactly the equality. For koenig egerary the union and intersection exactly give you two times alpha. Uh, you can think about different, some kind, unicyclic non-koenig egerary graph. And let us continue with this. Just enjoy the beauty of the, of the pictures here. And now our second player, critical independent sets. First of all, we're defining a function I think you'll love it. The, the function of, of a set is the difference between its cardinality and the cardinality of its neighborhood. So it's independent, but I'm interested in this difference. And I'm trying to maximize it. And my idea to find the independent sets where this difference is largest. OK, so a set is critical if the difference between its cardinality and the cardinality of its neighborhood is the maximum possible for the graph. Uh, 
Zhang proved that uh, actually you can, uh, you can find critical independent sets. So you, you can think even about non-independent sets critical, but uh, we can concentrate only on critical. So you, you, you can see this example. Let's say if you have this y, you have a, b minus u, a, b, 2, u is 1, so the difference is 1. You can see that it's a maximum critical independent set in, in this graph, for example. Uh, okay, as I told you before, critical independent difference and critical difference are the same, so we can think about critical independence different. And now, again, this uh, comparison between NP-hard and non-NP-hard. A maximum independent set is an NP-hard problem, and critical independent set is a polynomial problem. Moreover, you can find a critical independent set of maximum size in polynomial time. Moreover, there are, there are people in operations research using this for finding in real applications. I'm not a, a real, <laughs> I, I, I doesn't belong to re real applications, but there are people who use it. And what's the, the idea? As I told you before, core is the subset of every maximum independent set. As a core is pretty small set. But there is a theorem, we'll see it now, that every critical independent set is a subset of some maximum independent set. And it gives us uh, some kind of hope I, I'd like to find this the theorem. Said that I have just just one a uh, one minute, and I'm finishing here. I have three hours born here. Uh, but anyway, what's our point here? We can find a maximum largest critical independent set in polynomial time. It's pretty big independent set. We can prove that. You can bound it and you can build a maximum independent set containing this subset. And here, some kind of compromise. Or our expert, like in this example, pretty happy with this big independent set. Or he's not. And we start this uh, branch and bound procedure, and we start with pretty big independent set, and we're going to this heuristically maximum independent set. Uh, like I have 30 seconds, let me uh, finish this uh, huge talk. <laughs> uh, alpha plus mu is n. It means that every time you want to calculate alpha, try to calculate mu, but it's good only for koenig egger graphs. What's the connection between koenig egger graphs and critical? Take an induced graph on a critical set. It is koenig egger graph. So the main strategy, and some people think about this, is to, to analyze the structure of all koenig egger subgraphs of a graph and build efficient algorithm based on it. There is a very hot topic in computer science now. It's called fixed parameter tractable. They found, they're very, very proud of this, they found this structure, they call it crown structure. And they say it works efficiently because they can find crown structure. Crown structure is a koenig egger subgraph of a graph. Just let me, uh, it, it's written there, thank you very much for your attention. So just some short question, a bit lack of time. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much, Professor, for a very interesting talk. Um, but my question is about uh, non-approximability of maximum click um, problem uh, proved by Hostad. It's a well-known result. Uh, what about uh, approximation ratio uh, which you uh, can, give an, uh, can obtain using critical uh, sets? Uh, as you explained to, to us, there is no possibility to, to find this approximation ratio. What happens in practice is that these, uh, these sets are, are good, they are big, 
and experts are very happy with them. Or otherwise, the mathematics here, as we understand that it's, it's impossible to, uh, to find an approximation, good approximation. So what we are trying to do, or change their minds, the minds of experts. So instead, for example, like here, think about uh, some instead of, the, or you have this point like a starting point for some heuristic procedure, which you can't prove. <coughs> okay, thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.